All right, everyone, uh, here's your tutorial for the phone stand and getting started in Onshape. Uh, eventually, kind of in the next video, I'll talk about how to uh, turn these part files into a uh, laser cutter file. And so, uh, but that'll be kind of coming up next. First off, getting onto Onshape. So right now, if you're on, on ClassLink, you should have this option for Onshape Education. Uh, if that is not there right now, go ahead and go and open App Library. Uh, you can search for Onshape. And there should be one that says Onshape Education. Uh, so you can click on that one. I already have it on there. So if not, you would add the app. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so when you click on that, it should log you in. Um, if not, then when you, for, for your first time, you'll use your uh, Northville login and it should get you into this um, document page. Okay, if you're still having trouble with that, please let me know. Um, but at this point, we are here. Okay, so uh, typically when we get started with Onshape, you can kind of see what the final product will look like. Let me go ahead and pull that in right now. Okay, so the final product is going to be something like this. You'll see that uh, those two sides are actually the exact same. We've got a little center piece holding things together and a little bottom piece that's going to also link those parts together and then your uh, the phone will be able to sit right up there you can use the backside to you know put your own little trinkets you can uh, there's a hole there to feed the, the charging cable through something like that okay so to get to this point uh, we're gonna build all the parts kind of individually and a nice thing in on shape is that you can um, design parts in place, right? So you can kind of see that these were actually built in place here. And so I'm going to use this as kind of my uh, guide to get you guys started. Okay. So when uh, when you're back on this original page, yours might be pretty empty if you're if this is your, uh, essentially your first go at on shape here. So what you're going to do first is go here to create, and we're going to create a new document. Okay, so this is your document page. Uh, you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to go with phone stand example, and we'll hit OK. Okay, so now as this is loading up, the, the one thing that I like to do right at the beginning, and this is because uh, depending on the type of wood I'm going to be using, there might be a slightly different thickness, and meaning that the holes where the pieces are going to fit together, kind of like you see here, Right. If those, if the wood thickness is a little bit different, then all of these sizes will be changing with me. So instead of having to do that a bunch of times, I'm going to create a variable essentially called configurations. And every time I change that variable here, I can show you a quick example here. Let's say I'm using slightly thicker wood next time. It's 0.225. I just do 0.225, hit enter. Notice that all of my hole thicknesses changed with it. And you can see that everything's matching even with the thicker wood. Okay, so let me show you guys how to do that right now. Um, so the first thing I'm going to come come down to is over here on this side. There's a configuration panel, and um, you can configure the Part Studio, and we're going to do a configuration variable. All right, and I'm going to name this uh, thickness for the wood thickness. It'll default to and we're in millimeters right now, so I'm actually going to change my units um, just to be consistent here. My workspace units are going to be here inches. And uh, let's let's go ahead and change. Uh, no grams is fine. I'll keep that grams. Okay. So um, now that that's set, I'm going to come back again to configuration configuration variable, and like I said, I'll name this one thickness. Okay. The default is one inch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that now to the default being 0.225. And you know what? And right off the bat, if I want to change it. I could change it to 0.125, for example. OK, so now that that configuration, that variable is available to us, uh, just like usual in any other, uh, at least typical CAD software, the first thing we'll do is sketch. Okay, So hit create a new sketch right here. And I'm going to build mine off from the front plane. OK, so now it's selected to the front. I'm going to use my view cube over here to face the front. OK, and at this point, I'm really just sketching out so that I have um, my shape, right? So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to take a look at my sketch. Actually, I'm going to unhide it. You can double click on it, and let's see here. Okay, so right now, if you notice that all of the fillets are actually going to be put on at the end. Okay, so I'm going to try to follow this uh, sketch out. If you want, you can uh, maybe take a screen capture of this to kind of use as your guide. You can see all of the dimensions here. Uh, I also plan on putting a PDF of the uh, all the parts with the <coughs> 
uh, dimensions that I used. So you can use that as a base, but feel free to make changes as you need. All right. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to put this off to the side now. I'm going to use it as my guide. Um, so typically when I'm sketching, I'm actually going to be using uh, mainly line features for this one. Okay, so uh, to get going, typically I'm just going to draw my general shape. Okay, so I'm not even paying attention to any of my sizes right now. Okay, so generally the shape looks something like this. Uh, I'm trying to not use too many constraints. You'll see that that one came up perpendicular. I, want, I do want that horizontal, and I'll come back and click that together. Okay, so um, in on shape, you do want this to be grayed in the middle. Oh, that's showing me that it is uh, a closed loop or like a, a closed shape, which is what we want. And I realize I actually missed a line here, so let me delete that real quick. Sorry. Um, come back over here. I need a line coming straight up before I connect it over here. Okay, so this is the basic shape of uh, the side piece of our phone stand. Okay, all I did was use that line tool. And now I'm going to come through and I'm going to add a bunch of dimensions. Okay, so the dimensions, uh, as you can kind of follow along with that screenshot, as I mentioned to take earlier. Right, so this is actually 1.2. Um, the total length of this is actually much longer. So I'm just clicking on each side. And that's actually going to be 6 inches, for example. Uh, let's see what else we got. This here to here is actually uh, 0.65. Oops, that one wasn't great. Okay, so let's, before I do that one, uh, I should probably do the dimension from here to, uh, let's do from here to here first. Okay, so that one is actually 2.295. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, Let's see, we can also, the nice thing with a lot of these is you can drag some of your lines around to kind of get the shape that you need before you we get too far here. Okay, so you can kind of see uh, what I'm doing here. Let's see if I can get this a little bit closer to the original shape. Looks a little bit better. Okay, actually this dimension is not right, so I'll delete that for now. Um, this actually comes in like this. Alright, so um, the other thing in, within Onshape, there's sometimes these built-in constraints. Uh, so you can click on the Show Constraints button, and you can see what's happening here. So it looks like I accidentally created a couple constraints here. So I'm going to get rid of these perpendicular constraints. That should let me move things around a little easier. There we go. Okay, so again, that's the basic gist of how uh, we're going to do a lot of our dimensioning. Uh, and then if you want to later, there's a bunch of constraints you can add. So you can kind of put the perpendicular constraints back in after you've created some of these um, uh, dimensions. Okay, so I'm actually going to hit pause real quick. I'm going to throw a bunch of dimensions in and then uh, kind of show you guys the next step. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and make this video a little bit longer, so I'll just show you guys all the steps I'm taking. Okay, so I'm going to make these two lines parallel, and uh, let's go ahead and make a perpendicular constraint between here and here, because I know I'm going to make that actually perpendicular by the end. All right, so that's kind of um, getting some more detail to my um, shape now. And here's a couple more dimensions. I actually know that this is going to be 0.262, I believe it is. Uh, from here to, oops, grab the constraints. If you want to turn the constraints back off, if those start getting in the way, you can do that. Um, dimension again. So I'm going to click on this one. That's 0 0.65. And let's see what else I've got. Um, I think that's, oh, this one is a uh, angle. So here to here. If you click on those two lines, you'll create a degree angle. That should be 55. And am I missing any other ones along this corner? All right, so ideally you want everything to turn black. So it does look like I am missing a couple. So let's see, it looks like there's from here to here, this is actually 1.6. Right, that constrained a lot of that. Um, what else am I missing here? 2.295. Oh, I see it. This one, this right here is actually 0.6. And that gets me uh, with a black edge all the way around. That is great. Okay. 
Um, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and set up my uh, the holes where these are going to kind of be my mortise and tenon holes where the pieces will fit together. Okay, so I'm going to start with a simple uh, rectangle shape. I'm going to have one hole there. I'm going to have another hole right around there. And there's also one more that's right around here, give or take. Okay, so again, I'm just rough, like roughly estimating where I want those to be. And then afterwards, I'm going to hit the dimension tool and then put in my dimensions. Okay, so for the first one, I'm just going to get the location of them. So this one is actually going to be 0 0.07 from the bottom. Same with this guy right here is the same, point, uh, 0 0.07. And then, let's see, uh, the thickness of it, I'm going to keep that constant. So this here to here, these are going to be 0.5 and the same on this side. Okay, uh, on this side as well, these, this length is still 0.5. So from here to here, uh, I want to make that 0.5. And let's see, location-wise of the hole, just double-checking, making sure I got these right. Okay, so from here to this edge is going to be 2.07. And I think that is most of the location-wise. Where? Oh, no, just kidding. Uh, I need to say that this, from here to here, that distance, is going to be 0.375, so that shifts that over. Um, okay, and then from this edge to this edge, that should actually be a two. Okay, that's making some good progress. Let me see. Am I missing some other ones here? Yeah, I am. I'm missing one from here to here. Okay, so the height of that is 0.675. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, so still, the final part is actually um, how thick this hole is going to be. Like I said, this is where the wood is going to fit in with each other. Here's where I'm going to use my configuration variable. Okay, so I'm going to click on side to side. Now, instead of type, uh, keep putting a number in here, what I'm going to do is the number symbol, hashtag, and notice that already my variable popped up there. I want to use my thickness variable. Okay, hit enter, and it'll automatically change that put to 0.125. Okay, and do the same thing over here. Use the hashtag symbol or the number symbol. Make a thickness, hit enter. And then one more time from here to here is, again, hashtag thickness. Hit enter. Okay, so things are looking really good. Notice everything is in black. Uh, things are shaded in. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Okay, so now I'm hit the check mark. I've got my sketch created. Things are looking good. Okay, the final step to create my part is to actually extrude it. And there's my extrusion right there. Extrude, you can use the shortcut Shift E. Hit that. I'm going to find my profile. Select that one. And um, as a tip here, like I said, for the depth, instead of typing in a number, I'm going to use that variable I created. This allows me to make the changes to, if I use a different thickness of wood, I can do that really quickly. Okay, so I'm choosing that. Hit the check mark. And after that check mark shows up, I can rotate around. I see I've got my first wood piece created. Okay, uh, and actually, sorry, there's one more thing. Um, there are a couple fillets on here, so let's go ahead and throw the fillets on. I believe, if I remember correctly, there are a couple of different sizes, so uh, let me double check what these are one more time before uh, we before we move on here. Okay, so I believe, if I remember correctly here, I've got a. Oh, that's not the right one. Let me see. Go back over to my drawing. No, oh, sorry about that, guys. Got a got a little bit of lag issue over here. Okay, but uh, let's go ahead and sh just kind of come up with some numbers, I guess, is the is the way this is going to work. Give me one. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, so here, here is our fillets. So the first one, uh, I'm going to choose a fillet tool right there, Shift F, and I want to get this edge. Uh, this first one's actually going to be one inch. Okay, so I'll, I'll hit that one. That rounds out that edge. Um, the second one I'm going to do is all the four corners. And I believe these are going to be 0.125. So I'm going to rotate around. 
and um, go to my fillet tool, come to this corner. I'm going to select multiple here since I know that all of these are going to be this corner and this corner right there. Okay, all of these are actually going to be 0.125. Hit the check. Okay, and then last but not least, the uh, the corners right around where my phone's going to sit. I'm going to make these ones pretty small um, so that there's still a pretty good edge for it to catch. So I'm going to select the fillet tool. And uh, the nice thing I personally like with uh, Onshape is that as you select these edges, okay, um, you can you don't have to control click or anything. You just literally click on each edge. You change the radius. This one's going to be really small, 0 0.063, and hit the check mark. All right, and now we are all set. All of our edges are rounded, and I've got my first uh, side piece with the thickness configuration. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and stop this first video before um, we talk a little bit about the other two parts.